Hello everyone. Welcome back to the AI Tools Research Channel. I am your host Zeb Body. Today, we discuss the latest developments in the compute infrastructure for generative AI. Specifically, the GPUs that are at the heart of training and inference of large language models, or LLMs. Advancements and improvements in LLMs have only been possible because of the scaling in compute infrastructure. Basically, after the transformer was invented, we were able to scale large language models at incredible rates due to tremendous power of GPUs and TPUs. Effectively, their compute power has been doubling every six months. But how is it possible that by doubling compute every six months, the appetite for more compute by LLMs keeps increasing? The reason for that is quite simple. If you double the size of the large language model, you double the size of your brain you need twice as much information, or raw data, to fill it. And this means larger training data sets and more parameters and tokens. And so, every time you double your parameter count, you also have to appropriately increase your training token count. The combination of those two numbers becomes the computation scale you have to support. The latest state-of-the-art open AI model is approximately 1.8 trillion parameters. 1.8 trillion parameters required several trillion tokens to train. So a few trillion parameters on the order of a few trillion tokens on the order of when you multiply the two of them together is approximately 30, 40, or 50 billion quadrillion floating point operations per second. When you do the math, you have 30 billion quadrillion floating point operations per second, or 30 billion PETA floating point operations per second. And so, if you had a petaflop GPU, you would need 30 billion seconds to compute. To train that model, 30 billion seconds is approximately 1,000 years. As we saw the miracle of GPT emerge in front of us, we also realized we have a long ways to go. We need ever larger models, and these models will be multimodal models. We'll need to train the multimodality data, not just text on the internet and text in English, but on text in multiple languages, Chinese, French, Spanish, Urdu, Arabic, Russian, etc. We'll need to train them on images, graphs, and charts. Just as we humans learn watching TV, there are going to be a whole bunch of LLMs that will be learning by watching video so that they can be grounded in physics. They will be able to understand concepts such as an arm doesn't go through a wall, etc. These models would have common sense by watching a lot of the world's video combined with a lot of the world's languages. They'll use things like synthetic data generation just as humans do. When we try to learn, we use our imagination to simulate how it's going to end up. For example, if you have to give a speech, you imagine and prepare for the speech and what possibly will happen by mentally simulating it. Humans are constantly mentally creating and using synthetic data generation. So, these LLMs will be trained using reinforcement learning. They are going to practice as humans practice in our minds. AI working will be working with other AI training each other just like student-teacher debaters. All of that is going to increase the size of LLMs. It's going to increase the amount of data that we have. And we're going to have to build even bigger GPUs. NVIDIA's previous success of the hopper introduced in 2022, just 1.5 years ago, was fantastic. It has support for the TF32 tensor format for AI training and FP8 format for inferencing to improve performance. It had a larger GPU memory. Hopper H100 had up to 80 gigabytes of high bandwidth HBM3 memory. Thanks to Hopper that we were able to get the next set of LLMs such as Gemini 1.5, GPT-4, Claude 3, Mixtral 8X7B, and the amazing generative video models like Pika Labs, Runway Gen 2, and Soar, etc. But things are changing very rapidly, and we need bigger GPUs for the next generation of multimodal LLMs with trillions of parameters. And so, NVIDIA last week introduced a very, very big GPU they call Blackwell. It is named after David Blackwell, an African-American statistician and mathematician who made significant contributions to game theory, probability theory, information theory, and statistics. Blackwell is not just a chip. Blackwell is actually the name of a platform. The new GPUs are more of platforms, and not the traditional GPUs as we are used to. This is the trend in high-performance computing, or HPC. GPUs don't look the way they used to. Blackwell has 208 billion transistors, and is two chips next to each other acting as one single chip. There's 10 terabytes of data between the two. That is 10 terabytes per second. The two sides of the Blackwell chip have no memory locality issues. 
No cash issues. It's just one giant chip. The Blackwell chip goes into two types of systems. The first one is form fit function compatible to Hopper. You just slide out Hopper and replace it with Blackwell. This is one reason why the big challenges of ramping up will be overcome as this process is going to be very efficient. Currently, there are installations of hoppers all over the world, and they could be the same infrastructure with identical design, power, electricity, thermals, and software. NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Huang, has made the prediction that Blackwell will change the world, and it may very well do so because of the immense computing power it delivers. But Blackwell GPU is not cheap. It will cost between $30,000 to $40,000. That price seems justified at least initially because NVIDIA spent $10 billion to develop Blackwell. That is more than the gross domestic product of many nation states. Over 50 nation states in the world have less than $10 billion annual GDP each. Now let's dive deeper into the Blackwell platform. Here's how Blackwell is configured. You have dyes, two Blackwell chips and four Blackwell dies connected to a Grace CPU. The Grace CPU has a super fast chip-to-chip -chip link called the NVLink switch. What's amazing is that this is the first of its kind where this much computation fits into such a small place and its memory is coherent. The two chips work like one big chip on one application together. The NVLink switch allows efficient interconnection and scaling of multiple GPUs by providing ultra-high bandwidth with ultra-low latency and a direct GPU-to-GPU -GPU communication fabric. The latest fifth-generation NVLink technology enables a single GPU to support up to 18 NVLink 100 gigabytes per second connections, delivering an aggregate 1.8 terabytes per second bandwidth, double the previous generation and over 14 times faster than PCIe Gen 5. This massive bandwidth boost via the NVLink switch facilitates greater scalability for large multi-GPU platforms for training massive multimodal AI models with trillions of tokens and parameters. Let's compare Hopper to Blackwell in terms of performance. If you were to train a hypothetical GPT-5 model, having 1.8 trillion parameters on the existing Hopper H100s, it would take about apparently 3 to 5 months or so of continuous running and consuming roughly 25,000 amps of power. It would probably take something like 8,000 GPUs, and it would consume 15 megawatts of energy. So, to train a groundbreaking AI model, you need 8,000 GPUs and 15 megawatts of energy, and it would take 90 days or so to train this. The total cost of 8,000 GPUs at the current price of approximately $25,000 per GPU is $200 million. And that is just the cost of hardware. The cost of 15 megawatts of energy is in addition to this. If you were to use Blackwell to do the same training, it would only take 2,000 GPUs and the same 90 days. But here is the amazing part. The energy consumption is only 4 megawatts as compared to 15 megawatts. This is almost one-fourth the cost in energy. NVIDIA's stated goal is to continuously drive down the cost of GPUs and the energy consumed to enable compute power at scale. GPUs' cost and energy are directly proportional to each other both associated with the computing. With Blackwell, we may be entering a new era in computing at scale as we continue to expand and scale up the computation to train the next generation models. Training of massive large language models and inference, that is content generation, is vitally important going forward for innovations in generative AI. With new emerging multimodal content generation, like generating images, generating videos, generating proteins, generating chemicals and all other kinds of content generation, low-cost and affordable computing infrastructure for inference is vital for their mass adoption. Now that you understand the basics, let's take a look at inference of Blackwell compared to Hopper. The extraordinary thing is that in one generation a system that is designed for trillion parameter generative AI, the inference capability of Blackwell is off the charts. In fact, it is some 30 times that of Hopper. Blackwell is going to be just an amazing system to boost generative AI and the future data centers are going to be thought of as an AI factory. An AI factory's goal in life is to generate intelligence and create revenue. This new era we have entered into is the era of intelligence generation, and AI factories will serve as the infrastructure for this. The future of data centers lie in becoming AI factories, where the generation of intelligence takes center stage. Blackwell and hopefully other such innovations play a crucial role in this transformation, 
by providing the necessary computational power and efficiency to generate revenue and intelligence. To summarize, NVIDIA's Blackwell is a game changer in the world of accelerated computing and generative AI. Its impressive performance and advanced features has the potential for industry-wide transformation. For example, one of the exciting applications of Blackwell is in the field of weather forecasting. The ability to predict extreme weather events with greater accuracy and at a regional scale can significantly reduce the economic and human impact of such events. You can be assured, similar impacts will start to emerge in many other industries and domains such as medical, drugs discovery, space exploration, material sciences, climate change impacts, food production, and so on. The ability to generate intelligence at an unprecedented scale opens up numerous possibilities in all fields and domains. Thanks for watching. We hope you liked the video. Please subscribe to stay tuned for more such content. And don't forget to press the like button.